Yesterday, Jim Boone specifically brought his team together, said what happened with nine seconds to go. And at that particular juncture in the Western Michigan game, Mike Ross lost the basketball, and ultimately the, uh, the Eagles went down to defeat. On this possession, they came down the floor. Mike Ross had the, had the basketball in his hands, but nobody was really open, no execution, no flow. Jim Boone calls timeout, because as a coach, what you want to do is put your players in position to win. You got to look at Ricky Cottrell, you got to look at Steve Pettijohn, but don't count out Marcus Austin. The guy's made big plays all the way through the second half. Marcus Austin has made all the big plays. 19 points, 17 in the second half. That's why he is our Huntington player of the game. Six of nine from the floor for Marcus Austin. Who will the Eagles go to? He's trying to set up in the low block. Yeah, he's going to try to go after Smallwood on the low block. Timeout again as once again the Eagles, they're going to use their timeouts judiciously here. They wanted to run it down under 10 seconds. And now Jim Boone will use that West Virginia acumen of basketball. He's going to use his experience with Tommy Gaither with Bobby Knight with Tate Slot. He's going to use all that experience now to come up with the right play and put his people in the right spots. When we talked to Jim Boone the other night, we brought up the fact that Ron Kruger with the Atlanta Hawks used to say, listen, I got a pecking order problem right now with my Atlanta Hawks ball club. Mo McCone, assistant coach of the LA Clippers, said the same thing the other night. Jim Boone says, yeah, you know what? So do I, but that's because a lot of his freshmen would be playing complementary roles. But because of the situation that they're in right now, they're forced into more significant roles and it's been tough well they have been very tough in this ball game and maybe some of those freshmen will play a key role in deciding the outcome of this one with 10 seconds to go also remember rod judson has switched up defenses coming out of timeouts it appears he's going straight man to man coming out of the timeout right now you got to look for ricky contra off of multiple screens and look for marcus austin down low melvin hicks is positioned in the right low blocks marcus austin on the left wing contra will inbound into the backboard for Michael Ross. Now Austin, he'll try and create against Smallwood. Double team. Now Ross, he's got to get a shot away, and he won't. Time expired with the Eagles holding on to the basketball. Jim Boone and Rob Judson will play overtime against one another. Now their coaching wits reach a maximum at the end of regulation. Resistance becomes strength, becomes power. The power to change and reshape your entire body. This is Bowflex, an entire gym and one easy to use machine. So powerful, it delivers over 60 health club quality exercises with up to 410 pounds of resistance in any room in your home. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day, three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. And you can own one with no money down and payments as low as $33 per month. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. It has been everything we expected it would be. Northern Illinois and Eastern Michigan are forced to play an extra five minutes to decide the outcome. Walter Thompson made the offensive play on one end and now makes the defensive play. Reads the double team opportunity against, against Marcus Austin. Now he double teams again to disrupt the flow. Rod Judson comes out of that timeout and decides to change up his defense with a trap from his point guard. That is brilliant coaching, great execution. Walter Thompson with an offensive play to lead to the overtime and then a defensive play on the opposite end. You talked about the insertion of Walter Thompson to get the head back on the basketball team and he made the heady play there on the defense side allowing Rob Judson to smile at least for the time being anyway. Well, and Marcus Austin ends up catching the ball on the perimeter, tries to get dribble penetration, and I think if Jim Boone had it all do over again, he'd like Marcus Austin to have it on the block. Marcus Smallwood and Tyson Radney with the tip and Eastern Michigan controls. Ross feeding Petty John and it's kicked out of bounds. I like how Eastern Michigan comes out of the overtime period and right away looks to get the ball down low to Steve Pettijohn. He's been a guy that struggled a little bit lately here and now they want to get him some touches. Austin on the inbound pass and he's fouled. It's the second straight overtime game for Eastern Michigan. 
They lost a double overtime heartbreaker, 101-94 to Western Michigan. So they are 0-1 on the season in overtimes. Northern Illinois, in the meantime, is 2-0 in overtime contests. You know what, though? That's the math. It doesn't matter if you're in first place or last place. There's a whole bunch of ball clubs here that can play toe-to-toe -to -toe every night. It's a great league, great for the fans, and everybody's being treated to two ball clubs going after each other tonight. We really have some great players in this conference. We have seen a number of them in this ball game. David Weber immediately comes to mind out of Central Michigan, of course, and you could go on and on and on to watch some of these guys play the game the way it's supposed to be played. I did David Weber against Dayton earlier this year, and that young man, man, you talk about a guy who can load it up and score in a variety of ways, David Weber. Of course, his brother is a all-star. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> Chris Weber of the Sacramento Kings and is in Philadelphia this week. He's making all as much money as you. <laughs> oh, how I wish. I wish came true for the Eagles at the free throw line. They made a vote. Marcus Austin, money. 76-74, Eagles on top. Smallwood, the top side. Really looking for Leon Rodgers over the top. There's P.J. Smith wide open. They will opt for Smith. He missed the three-pointer. That's a good look, though, Coach. You got to like that shot because it was wide open. And you got to like the midget on the floor. Skyen for the rebound as well. Michael Ross Skyen for that rebound. Always root for the, for the small guy. 5'9", he, Walter Thompson, both around 5'9". Ricky Cottrell, and he is fouled. Well, I see Eastern Michigan in the second half have done a lot more penetrating, a lot more posting up and forcing Northern Illinois to play better defense. They've certainly been more aggressive, whether it be getting the ball down the low block or taking the ball off the dribble. And Rob Judson's got to be concerned about the dribble penetration of Ricky Cottrell. He's sneaky quick. Once he got by the defender, a little shoulder slam gave him to the avenue to the basket, and now he'll go to the line because of a good fundamental move, getting the ball to the rack. Surprisingly ineffective at the free throw line. Eastern Michigan, though, very effective in the game plan. Jim Boone told us earlier, got to keep Northern Illinois off the glass. They got to match their physicality, be patient on offense, and make them defend and get to the free throw line. Cottrell splits the pair. They lead by three. The Eagles have done a better job of that in the second half and the overtime so far than they did in the first half. Elliot Rogers and the flush is true. Set play off the bench, it was called, and Leon Rogers explodes to the basket. And boy, when you got a guy like Alex Rochick out there, he's going to put it right on the rim for you. Beautiful lob pass there to bring the Huskies within one. Trillman trying to post up Smallwood. Keep in mind, Rogers is one foul away from leaving this ballgame. Trillman takes it inside, and Eastern Michigan coughed it up. Credit Northern Illinois defense. They forced Perlman out on the perimeter where he catches it from 15 feet where he's not accustomed to making a play. He thinks he's on the block, but he's been pushed out so far. Turns into a turnover. There's Walter Thompson. Trying to move around the rising screen. Watch it. Now Smallwood. Left alone for a moment. Perlman really sagging off. Turnover all over Illinois with 17 turnovers so far. Eastern with 12. Moving screen by P.J. Smith and an offensive foul. Smallwood had two open looks from the top of the key, about 20 feet away from three-point range. He can knock those down, but he chose to go along the wing. You know, and look at the body language right now of Northern Illinois. They're down by one point, but there's some guys kind of hanging their heads right now. Right now, you need leadership from Leon Rodgers. You need him to step up, pull everybody in the huddle, and say, hey, guys, listen, we got 319 to go. We're down one. Let's pull it together right now. Get it done. Your best players got to step up and show leadership right now. E.J. Smith has fouled out from Northern Illinois. is Rob Judson to turn to Julian McElroy. P.J. Smith with his run of double-figure games, averaging 17 points over the last seven ball games, sits on the bench now 0 for 5 from the three-point line and eight points overall. The defensive effort of Eastern Michigan has really negated P.J. Smith. Cottrell back at the free-throw line. 88% on the year. Struggled here tonight, though. First one is good. Heck of an athlete. Besides playing basketball, also played golf. Was a track star at Polka High School in West Virginia and was the president of the National Honor Society. It's a pretty good career, isn't it? Not bad. That's the match. A lot of guys like that in this league. Smart and athletic. 79-76, Eastern Michigan after the two, Ricky Cockrell makes. Swatchik doesn't mind a hand in his face. Look at that. Bingo. 
this kid is just one for three. He wants the basketball. He wants the challenge. Now let's watch it. Four triples in the ball game. 34 on the season. A little bit out of Radney's range there, but Austin fought for the rebound. It's loose on the floor. Prillman has it. against Swatchik. Takes it in amongst the trees. Missed the shot. Rogers is there to wipe the glass clean. Rogers now with nine rebounds. Making ten. So he has a double-double. Looking hard to Leon Rogers' world. Hook in the lane wow. from the dotted line. 17 career double-doubles now for Leon Rogers. That ties Cleveland Ivy for number 11 all-time in school history. And a timeout on the floor. Jim Boone and the Eagles have watched the Huskies go on a 5-0 run to claim a two-point advantage. You know, Ricky Contra right now, obviously, he's the best basketball player for Eastern Michigan. He's a guy that can put the ball on the floor, but there are times when you need to pull out and find somebody else. Here comes the pressure from the backside. Leon Rogers and Marcus Smallwood folding down on the dribble penetration, and then you see Rogers on the backside, on the offensive side. The reason you get it to your best player, some guys make great plays, and other guys don't. You know what I love about that shot from Leon Rogers? No hesitation whatsoever. Got the basketball. Hopped in the lane. Not an easy shot either, but he hit it. Well, and there was no double team. We've seen the double come from the backside on Leon Rodgers throughout the second half and throughout this ball game. But somebody fell asleep at the switch, and Leon Rodgers, when he gets an open look in the paint, he might as well count the deuce. Hey, how about the fact that Leon Rodgers, for the sixth straight game, has gone over 20 points. It's the 13th time he's done it this year, and 29th time he's done it in his career. That ranks eighth all-time in Northern Illinois history, but the sixth Six in a row ties T.J. Lux for most in their most recent 16-year span of the program. T.J. Lux was a heck of a ball player in DeKalb. All right, join us Monday night at 7.30 as Mac Monday Madness returns. Don't miss any of the action as the Ohio Bobcats visit their arch rival, the Red Hawks from Miami. Check your local listings for coverage in your area or visit the Mac websites on the air page at www.mac-sports.com. That is our next Next broadcast here on Fox Sports Net. That one should be a dandy. This one has been fabulous. It has been because Leon Rogers has come with his A game, and he does it every night. That's what separates yeah. him, I think, from other players in the Mid-American Conference right now. He has put together a string. He's been consistent all the way through the season, and Rob Jetson loves his big power forward, Leon Rogers. Had 23 points in 36 minutes and a setback to Ball State. He has followed that up with a 25 performance here against CMU. There's a steal. Walter Thompson. Missed it, but Rogers is there to help him out. Walter Thompson not just misses the shot right there, but he looks over his shoulder to see if there's black jerseys coming, so he goes ahead and commits himself to the basket. And how about all the black jerseys going after the ball on the rim? Cottrell forced it up. Oh, Eastern wanted that one. He'll have to run him at the line. Sean Easel with the personal foul. Here comes Walter Thompson. Looks over his shoulder right there. Puts the ball up off the glass. Leon Rogers, one of the best players in transition we've seen this year once again. The trailer gets it done. The Convocation Center here in Ypsilanti has been Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, no question about it. 27 points in the ball game, and folks, he has scored all his second half points while being in foul trouble. He has carried those four personal fouls for a long time. And you don't often think of the trailer in a full court offense as being option A. Leon Rogers has convinced me that the trailer tonight is option A. has made his last five free throw attempts and brought the Eagles to within two. I think you go to the well again, get the ball in your best hands, and the best player's hands, Leon Rodgers, down low, let him go to work. Gonna have to go. Swatchik, ice in his veins. My, oh, my, 
35 for his career. Five triples. Calmly sags his way back into the backcourt and will play defense now. He has been money as well. Cockrell driving baseline. Stripped. Got it back and made the hoop. Ricky Cottrell answers with a little dribble penetration. Going up strong in the trees, but finds a way to get it home. It is 86-83, Northern Illinois, who at one point had blown a 12-point advantage. Swatch it to McDowell. Oh, well, there's Rogers low. They got him isolated down low. He wants it, too. And we got a timeout for the Huskies. Rob Judson knows this is an important possession. His club leads by three with about 50 seconds to go in the first overtime. I met Al Swatchik in the elevator today, and we got a chance to visit a little bit. He's now five for nine from the three-point line, which is not unusual for a young man who loads up for three consistently 17 points now on the night. He's a guy that's got the fire in his eyes. He wants the basketball in late-game situation. When you got a guy like Leon Rogers down low, Al Swatchik's going to get some pretty good looks on the perimeter because the defense is focusing so much on Rogers. Here's an honorable, men honorable mention All-State selection out of Argo High School in Summit, Illinois. Hit a school record 205 three-pointers, and before his career is done at Northern Illinois, he just might uh, threaten that record in DeKalb as well. You gotta love Polish kids that can run the give and go. Give it to me and everybody else go to heck, because I'm gonna shoot it. <laughs> or go back down the other end of the court because I'm gonna go. make it. That's right. Also Thompson against Michael Ross. It's been a nice matchup all night. Watch it. Smallwood, looking. To Thompson. Rogers trying to post up, headed down. He's forced him way out of the block, though. That's what Eastern Michigan wanted to do. Two on the shot clock. Hey. Thompson's got to shoot it. Missed it. And it's Eastern Michigan basketball. Credit Let's go Michael away, Ross. Folks. 29 seconds in just a three point game. Excuse me, Matt. Credit Michael Ross right there with the fake and fade down low. And Leon Rogers didn't know whether to go score or give it up because of the defensive fake and fade back on the perimeter of Michael Ross. Excellent defensive execution. 20-second timeout for Eastern Michigan to try and diagram a play. Now, you've got 29 seconds left. What is the time in which you want your team to shoot the basketball? Immediately. I think you go ahead and attack the basket. And don't worry about the three. Get dribble penetration. I think you get it down to a later possession. You've got to score. Now, if you get penetration and can kick, that's fine. But I think you go ahead and attack the basket because typically defenses, what's that coach saying over there, Rob Judson, right now? Don't foul. Right. Don't foul. So on the offensive end, you put the ball on the floor, you get the ball to the basket, you hope you get some contact so you can score while the clock is stopped, then foul on this end, and then have another two-point opportunity. He's probably also telling his guys, don't necessarily anticipate the three, okay? Right. Because if you're going to start anticipating the three, they're going to dribble right by you and make it an easy layup. And Ricky Cottra right now, the best three-point shooter on this basketball team, two for nine, and that's why I think Eastern Michigan, go ahead and attack the basket if you get dribble penetration, then look for the three. Michael Ross with Cottra on the backcourt, Trillman, Pettijohn, and Austin. Cottra, great move in the lane, and the floor falls. One-point lead for the Huskies. Eastern Michigan has to foul. Don't want to foul, foul him. Him. No, but they had to. The foul needed to take place on the inbound pass. When Walter Thompson got it, they should have followed him. Why? Because he shoots 42% from the free throw line. And Swatchik is a 90% shooter. He's got the flow of the game, and now he'll step up the line. But either way, even if he makes both, Jim Boone and Eastern Michigan still have an opportunity right. to tie this thing or go ahead with a three-point shot. Swatchik is also two for two from the line for Rod Judson tonight. Thompson has yet to visit the strike. First one rattles home, so it's a two-point Husky advantage. 11.6 seconds left to go in overtime. Melvin Hicks now coming into the basketball game. Ricky Cottrell will take over point guard duties now, and if he gets dribble penetration, you could bet Melvin Hicks will be ready to load it up for three. That's some three-point shooters in there for Eastern Michigan. Swatchik, yet to miss at the strike. Stays that way. A three-point advantage. And Northern Illinois will apply full core pressure. Rob, Rob Judson just said full. Actually, that could be a full timeout. So it is a full timeout. I thought he meant full core pressure. But he may sag off a little bit. There's our play of the game. Al Swatchik right here. Al Swatchik burying this 
triple, his fifth of the ball game. He now has 18 points, and look at how calm and cool he is. You never know, he's a sophomore. That tied that one up, and then Northern Illinois was able to go back on top because of his two recent free throw makes. The difference is three in favor of the Huskies, who are looking for their second straight season series sweep at Eastern Michigan. We mentioned depth a long time ago, and Al Swachik, a part of that depth, the guy that got into the rhythm, was able to find his shot, and he was wide open because of dribble penetration by guys like Walter Thompson, for example, and also because of the, the defense look low on a Leon Rodgers, and Al Swachik now is the hero of this basketball game if Northern Illinois can hold on. Now, the Eagles, on the other hand, they've got to go for a three now, Matt, with 11.6 seconds to yeah. go. And I think you go screen for screener. I think you look for Ricky Cottrell, maybe look for a little screen off there, and then set a back screen for Melvin Hicks to fade him and throw over the top and maybe let Melvin take a crack at it. All right, if you're Northern Illinois, do you sag off or do you continue to apply the pressure and force him to uh, hustle it up? Well, I apply the pressure. I mean, I'm a guy, I want to I want to die attacking, you know? If I'm going to get beat, I want to attack somebody. And I think there'll be some soft pressure to take some some seconds off the clock, and these are valuable seconds right now. Our great minds think alike. You and Rob Judson are on the same page. They will sag off the inbound passer, Steve Pettijohn. Cottrell, greeted by Swatcher. Gets a screen from Pettijohn. Oh, and they can't hold on to it. Hicks was waiting for it, couldn't handle the hot pass, and with five seconds to go, Northern Illinois has a chance to possibly salt this one away. Well, Hicks was guarded in the far corner, did not take the dribble penetration, did not take the bait from Eastern Michigan. Northern Illinois stayed with their man out on the perimeter, and Hicks tried to catch the ball and shoot it too quick, and that was just enough for a turnover. Well, Jim Boone cannot believe it. A chance to step forward in your home building, climbing all the way back to garner the lead, and to watch it come down to a turnover at the end has to be so very frustrating. The turnover, the 14th for Eastern Michigan in this ballgame. After the game the other night, it was a hard-fought battle at Western Michigan. How did Jim Boone handle it? He told his team, guys, you won tonight. I'll take the L, put it on my record. We'll take the day off on Thursday and come back and play hard. And they have. Rob Judson came off a tough loss the other night to Ball State. And I got to believe Rob Judson right now, if he can come in second place in this division, we're looking at the coach of the year over there on that bench. I think this guy's done a tremendous job. Five wins last year at Northern Illinois. Now this ball club's going to go 6-6 six and six in the MAC and 10-11 and overall. This guy's done an outstanding job. He's got my vote for MAC coach of the year so far. That's a good call, considering last year was the worst in the 100-year history at NIU. The pride has been restored. They're going to back way off now. 4.3 seconds. The difference is five. Eastern Michigan will remain winless in conference games at home. Northern Illinois extends their personal winning streak over the Eagles to four straight. They win it 90 to 85 in overtime. Fabulous ball game. We'll wrap it up for you from the Convocation Center in Eastern Michigan when we come back. NCAA's college basketball's March Madness begins with Mac Madness at the Mid-American Conference Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament's tip-off at Cleveland's Gun Arena, March 6th through 9th. Don't miss any of the action as the Mac's top teams collide to determine who gets an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament. Mac Tournament individual tickets, including the championship games, on sale now at your Mac school, Gun Arena, and through Ticketmaster. This March, the NCAA sends out invitations to the big dance. Be there to see who delivers and who accepts. Mac Madness. Catch it. All right. How much did you spend? Oh. Savings we put in writing. One more way at Giant Eagle, we make every day taste better. You know, most men get pretty shook up about losing their hair. But today, many of them are learning about Bosley Medical. They use your own living hair to fill in the thin spots. Just look at that. It really works. You can treat it like real hair because it is real hair. Your own naturally growing hair. So you don't have to worry about it. 
Bosley Medical is the world's most experienced hair restoration practice. For over 25 years, they have performed more than 130,000 procedures using the innovative micrografting techniques pioneered by founder Dr. L. Lee Bosley. Each surgeon at Bosley Medical is board certified and individually trained by me. So if you want to have your own naturally growing hair back, call this number for more information. We'll send you this free video and in-depth guidebook that gives you the real facts about hair restoration. There's no cost and absolutely no obligation. So do it for yourself. Call now and get the real results you've been looking for. It's your real hair. You can't do better than real. Northern Illinois stays perfect in overtime games this year. Now 3-0 after beating Eastern Michigan 90-85. to Welcome back to the Convocation Center. What a great ball game. Easy to talk about Leon Rogers, folks, but there are a couple other guys who contributed mightily to the Huskies' victory. Al Swatchik just found a way to score. His dribble penetration became the offensive flow for Northern Illinois. Al Swatchik just lit it up. And how about Walter Thompson? When it comes to late-game situations, it's all about point guard play. He found Marcus Smallwood wide open for a layup late in the ball game and then makes the defensive play of the game against Marcus Austin. The play of the game, Al Swatchik, the play of the game 1A. I got Blavis Thompson. We talked about at the beginning, folks, the, the kind of metal these two teams show, even though they don't have the records they would like. I don't think we were disappointed here tonight. Do you? No, I love these two ball clubs. One came in here 1-11 and played their guts out. <laughs> and then Northern Illinois and Rob Judson came in with a wonderful game plan, as did Jim Boone. We saw two of the best coaches in the MAC going toe-to-toe -to -toe tonight. Yeah, this was a heck of a ball game, folks. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Our next broadcast here on Fox Sports Net comes your way Monday night when Ohio University will battle their arch rival, the Red Hawks, from Miami. That comes your way at 7.30. In the meantime, tonight's final score, 90-85, to 85, Northern Illinois wins it. For my partner, Mark Adams, and our entire Fox Sportsnet crew, my name is Matt Shepard, saying so long from the Convocation Center in Ypsilanti on the campus of Eastern Michigan University, where again, Leon Rogers and the Northern Illinois Huskies take care of business in overtime, winning it 90-85. to 85. Coming up next, full access, and then the Chicago Sports Tonight is later on. Good night. and the safety net at local food processing plants. And Monday at 10, ways some butchers are giving new life to unsold beef right under your nose. Now the problem solvers reveal tricks of the trade. It's not the right thing to do. That old meat is still there. So how fresh is this package?